Welcome to Confessions of a Workaholic, where we share the success secrets of fearless female entrepreneurs who are obsessed with success. This is your girl, Corey Yell, and you are in for a treat because on this episode of Confessions, we are talking about a hot topic that all of you beginning bosses and aspiring entrepreneurs need to know about. This episode is brought to you by The Inner Circle, a personal and professional mentoring program for goal-getting women. For more information on how The Inner Circle can support you and your success, visit MajorKeyMentoring.com. Now, today we are talking to Chloe Williams. She's the Director of Public Relations and Communication for Revolt Media and TV. Prior to working for Revolt, she started her PR career at Time, Inc., working with Essence and People Magazine. She is the boss behind the brand that you love, and this woman is definitely, definitely going to drop many, many major keys. So, Chloe, are you ready to confess? I am. Hi, guys. So I always um, like to start by asking what you actually started your career in. So I'm not sure if you started in, in PR right out of school, but I think it's always interesting to see how people's careers sometimes lead them from the path that they started from. Sometimes they realize their passions and it's, it leads them away from their, their profession. So is that your experience or did you actually start out right out of school working in PR? No. So funny story. When I was in college, um, and I would just encourage anybody listening that's in college to do internships. So my first internship was at the NBA, um, and it was a great experience, but I realized I didn't want to work in sports. Um, and then my next internship was at Vibe Magazine, where Vibe still was in print. It was like the premier black uh, magazine at the time, like kind of hip hop entertainment magazine. And I, um, I loved it. Like it was a smaller company, so I had a lot of hands-on experience. Um, my, the associate pub at the time, publisher at the time became one of my mentors, and it's really how I got to where I am today, just keeping in contact with him. Um, but when I graduated from school, I graduated and I didn't have, I honestly didn't even have a job or an internship. So I moved to New York on a one-way ticket. My mother thought I was crazy, but I told her, I'm like, believe me, I'm going to figure it out. And I had an internship for, I had an interview interview for an unpaid internship at a fashion showroom um, because somehow I figured I could work in fashion and entertainment or something. I didn't know what exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to work in entertainment. Um, and then that that interview worked out. I got the job. It was still an unpaid internship. And then it turned into um, a full time position after like two weeks. So I was a I was a brand manager for a fashion showroom. So essentially, I was kind of doing PR, but it was more so um, publicists were coming to me and I was trying to pitch them like why their clients should wear the brand or what magazines, why the brand should be in their magazine. I did that for about three months. Um, and to be honest, I just really didn't like the woman that I was working for. And I was really, really stressed out. So my uncle, who's my mentor, he was like, just quit. And you find something else, just quit. Um, and so I did. And I, 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 it was a really, really difficult time in the economy because it was like 2008, 2009. Um, and you, if anybody who was around back then knows like the, how the economy crashed. And I started working for American Apparel as a, as a sales associate. And I honestly thought that was like not my low, but I'm like, here I am with all of this internship experience. Um, I have great connections, but nobody's hiring. Everybody's playing off. So let me do this. Um, and I did that for about a year and a half. And I became a visual merchandising manager while I was do, doing all the windows for all of the stores in New York. They end up sending me sending me to like the number one store um, in the state. And I became very successful at it because I have, I always tell myself like, no matter what you do, give it a hundred percent, even if you don't want to do it. Right. Um, and then almost two years to the date, um, I got a call from Essence to come in for an, inter an interview. I sent them my resume like two years prior and I would follow up with nothing, nothing, nothing. And they called me and said that you came highly recommended. I came highly recommended from my prior boss at Vibe. And so I went in for the internship, I mean, the interview, and they told me, they were like, you know, this is for a temp position. And I was like, here I am again. I'm about to quit a full-time job that I now have as at American Apparel with benefits. 
for um, a temp position. And then I just, I just said, you know what? I talked to my mom and I said, it's all about stepping out on faith. And this is what I think I was born to do. I think I was born to do PR. Um, and three months turned into a year, a year turned into two years. And then I was there for five years. So that's, and I, I honestly went into it, not necessarily knowing much about PR, but I just knew I was a quick learner. And I told, you know, the the woman who was hiring me, who has become my favorite person in the world, one of my, my, my biggest supporters, like, listen, give me a shot and I will prove to you that I, that I can learn this and that I can be good at it. And so that's how I got into PR. So you mentioned one thing that I hear from so many women who have really, really like broken through, you know, um, their fears and really gotten to maybe not where they want to be, but on the way to, to, to becoming the woman that they know that they were born to be. They had to go against the grain. They had to step out on faith at different turns in their life. So how hard was it going against the grain and fighting the fears of other people, specifically your mom? Because I think, you know, with women, especially the people closest to us sometimes can discourage us, even if it's coming from a good place, you know, even if it's coming from a place of protection or a place of love or a place of concern, sometimes their fears or, you know, those, those limitations can stop us from going after the things we really want. So how were you able to do it? And do you have any advice for anybody who may be facing, you know, those similar situations? Yeah. And I think to your point, it comes from a place of worry, right? Like our parents, my mom is a single mom and she, she, she gave me a lot and gave me as much as she could by herself. Um, and it comes up, comes from a place of worry, but there were, there were, it was twofold for me. Like I'm, I'm a girl from the South side of Chicago and it, and I just knew like, you know, my mother sacrificed so much for me. There was no way that I couldn't, couldn't make it. Like there was no way I could go back home and that this journey of her, like, sacrificing so much to put me through college and just everything that she did for me was just kind of like there was no way I was going home I go home now but I go home as this 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 woman that you know have has, has accomplished things but I'm still a mama's girl right but I think you know you have to you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in who you are and what you bring to the table a lot of times you know, people will try to discourage you and make you feel like, oh, even trying to work in entertainment, like there's so many people, they'll tell you there's so many people who want to do what you want to do. And you have to set yourself apart, right? Like as an intern, I was, there was no such thing as for, for me as nine to five. It was nine until the job get done. There was no such thing for me as wearing jeans to work. Like I walked, I walked in there every day, like I was a, a, an employee, you know, with my stilettos and, you know, you, I was dressed in the part where, so that I was, my whole thing was leave a lasting impression, you know? Um, and it was, it was to the point where some, sometimes people's assistants would be out and as an intern, they would come and say to me, Hey, can you fill in for so-and-so for the week? And I was no longer doing my intern duties. I was doing assistant and coordinator duties because I would always try to make sure I stood out. I would always speak up. Um, I would always speak up when, when there were meetings and things like that. So I, I just constantly made sure that um, I was I was seen and I was heard. So I know that you are a fellow HBCU alum. I know you're not going to get off this interview without mentioning it because every <laughs> person, you're probably the third or fourth um, uh, FAMU graduate that I've had here on Confessions. And y'all love to say FAMU, 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 FAMU. Um, so she is a FAMU grad, another one. I'm going to have to get some TSU people um, on the show. But how important was I'm striking, it? <laughs> I'm striking and I'm striking and I'm striking. Yes, I bet you are. <laughs> how important was it for you to attend a Black college? And why do you think it's important for us to continue to support them? So for me, I'll be honest. When I, when I went... When I decided to go to FAMU, I knew I was going to an HBCU, but I wasn't going because I thought that it was because I, I thought that it was important to go. Like I, my uncle, who, again, is my mentor, he went to an HBCU, but I had already had my mind up that I was going to a state school. And then I, I applied to FAM last minute and I was like, you know what, like. There's, I had a I had a girl who I danced with growing up who who was there. She was like in my ear and I was like, let me just give this a shot. And I mean, it when I tell you it wholeheartedly changed my life. Like going to an HBCU is like waking up every day going to a family reunion. Like seriously, I don't know how how else I can put it. Um, but I think that it, it gave me the confidence um, that I have now. 
And it's just, it prepares you for the world. You, you, you wake up every day and you're surrounded by people that look just like you, who are challenging you, who are supporting you, who are encouraging you. I mean, you know, I, I always tell people from my job, my internship at Vibe to where I am now, I have never like a- applied for a position. My resume has just been passed on and passed on because of my family network. And I think that that's, that's what you get when you go to any HBCU. I mean, FAMU is the best HBCU. But Don't I think that's, do it. Don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> I think that's what you get when you go to any, when you, when you go to any HBCU, like the network is just, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, um, some of my best friends and, and women who will be in my marriage, my, my wedding, um, you know, went to FAMU. And I think that it's just the culture of an HBCU and what they teach you and what they stand for. And, you know, they were they existed before we, we were even allowed to go to any other institution. Um, and I, I can get on my soapbox, but I won't. But <laughs> I just think that it's just and they're relevant today because black and brown children still need that encouragement. They still need that education. You know, I, I mean. I went to a predominantly black high school, but but the education that I got at FAMU about my identity and who I am and what I what I mean to this world, I, I I couldn't get that anywhere else. And then it makes me it makes me hold my head high when I walk outside because I know who I am and I know you know how important my excellence is to this world. So I think HBCUs will always be important. They will always be needed. So I think I already know um, the answer to this next question, but in doing the work that you do now and in having the right relationships with the people who attended school with you, and we all know people who have gotten, you know, these degrees and taken out these loans and just are not using our education in the sense of, you know, applying for a job and getting it based on the degree that we have. So knowing what you know and doing what you do, do you think attending college is necessary? Like, what is the conversation going to be like with your future children about attending school. I know you're going to encourage them to go to an HBCU if they want to go to college, but do you think college is necessarily necessary? Such a hard question because I just, I think it, it depends on your maturity, right? Um, you have some people, I know for me, I wasn't mature enough to just come out of high school and just come into the real world and figure it out. Um, but I do know, and then you, because you, I know when we were in college, we would be in chemistry like, now, what is this? How is this going to help me in the real world? You know, but I think the experience in being in college helped me in the real world. It, it just it kind of it kind of, you you know, you come from your mother's house and then you go to college and then it, it, it's kind of the next phase of your life of, of growing up. Um, I kind of think of like what when I watch Grownish, I think about like being in college and things like that. It definitely teaches you a lot. It teaches you how to be on your own. Um, and I think that it just depends on it just depends on what you want to do with your life. You know, some people want to be hairdressers, some pe- and pe- people and you have people that are amazing at it. You have entrepreneurs who have built global brands as uh, as a hairdresser, you know, and they that they didn't necessarily go to college. So I just think it depends what you want to do in your life. But then also. Um, you, your maturity level. So you mentioned, you know, the relationships that you got, not only at FAMU, but in, in your internships and in the different roles and the positions that you've held. And I always say, um, not only in entrepreneurship, but just in life period, like your power is in your people and not just the people, you know, who know you, but the people who are willing to answer that phone, who are willing to respond to that email and, and send that, you know, that e- email introduction and and connect the pieces, you know? And so how important have, have relationships been to your career? And then also what advice can you offer for people who are maybe just getting started in their industry or in their field and haven't developed any of those relationships yet? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I like to say all the time, like when I'm talking to students that I'm mentoring or whatever, I'm a firm believer that your network is your net worth. Who you know will get you in the door and what you know will keep you there. And I think that surrounding yourself by people. But then also, I, I also think that not only surrounding yourself, but having a relationship that's that's mutually beneficial, right? A lot of times we, we're just looking for people to do things for us. And then and then it's like, well, but what are you bringing to the table? Um, so I would tell anybody that's, that's going into the industry, you know, you're reaching out to people to say, hey, can I, can I sit down and can I have an informational with you? But then also reach out to them and you know that they have an event coming up and say, hey, can I volunteer? And I guarantee you, 
when they when when someone reaches out about a, a position or or a job or just anything that's available, they'll think of you because they'll be like, you know what, this person doesn't doesn't only reach out to me when they need something; they reach out to me and offer they offer help. Um, but I'm a firm believer of having a mentor and a sponsor. Mentors are kind of people that you know go through your career and life with you, and sponsors are people that speak up when you aren't in the room. Um, and I had the pleasure of having a lot of sponsors when I was at Essence. People that you know, when I wasn't in the room, they they would they would say, Chloe would be great to do that. Chloe should do that. And then I would get an email from maybe the president the next day and be like, Chloe, can you do X, Y, and Z? But it's also, it's all about leaving the right impression. Um, and it kind of goes back into, you know, having a really great brand and and making sure that pe- that people see that you're, you're working hard. But I definitely think that um, having a great network and being able to call on people when you need them, but also being able to be there when people need you, when people need you is extremely important. And the, the thing that I think is so important um, when it comes to relationships, like you said, is that they're reciprocal, right? Like you are actually adding value, not just asking for what you need, but actually giving, you know, what you have as well. How important is having good character? Because I think we talk about so many different like pieces of the business puzzle, like how to be a boss and how, you know, to, to make money and, and all of this. But we don't ever really talk about good character and how far that will get you in your career. So can you speak on just how important it's been for you to be a woman of your word and for you to be thorough in every role that you've held so that you can have those sponsors and have those people who are speaking up for you and, and vouching for you? Well, I think, I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's essential. Like, you can be the most best dressed, articulate person in the room, but if your if your attitude sucks and you just don't exude positive vibes, nobody wants to be around you. I think character is key in everything you do, whether it be you know your professional life or your personal life. Like it's it's key, I, and I just I'm, I can't advocate for it any any more than I'm saying because it's just it's one of those things that. You know, it's it's your personal brand. It's your personal brand. And it follows you wherever you go. And nine times out of 10, people hear about you before they meet you. And the last thing you want them to hear is that, oh, she has a nasty attitude or, oh, she lies a lot or, oh, she's not dependable or because a lot of times people won't hire you versus based off of what their friends say about you. So I think character is key. And again, and in, in not just in your professional life, but in your personal life. And it's just it, it just takes you a long way. And it, it really want, it allows people to see who you are and want to be around you and want to be an advocate for you. So, so true. Um, that's such a good point, especially with, you know, social media being what it is. It, people can very easily connect the dots every we're only, you know, that six six degrees of separation thing is probably down to like two you don't know who knows you, right? And so that's why it's so important for you to just do the right thing. It's so much easier to do the right thing than try to explain why you did the wrong thing. I Um, agree. And and you, 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 not to um, cut you off, but you brought up social media and it's one of those things that, you know, people, a lot of people don't understand that that's where you need to have great character too, right? Like you put yourself out there and then these jobs or even just nasty comments and things like that, all of that stuff can come back to haunt you. And it's, it's, it takes more energy to be, to be negative than it does to be positive for sure. Absolutely. So, so true. I think it's so critical that you focus on, you know, on, on building yourself inside out, not just trying to get to the check. Um, but okay, so public relations is one of those terms that is way overused. Um, everybody <laughs> says they are a publicist, and a lot of people still don't understand exactly what it means. Can you define what PR is and what exactly your 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 job does? What your role is as a publicist? I like to say PR runs the world. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a publicist really like we're storytellers. Right. Like, so when you when you when you open up a magazine and you're reading something about your favorite celebrity or you're scrolling through, you know, your favorite blog, somehow, some way a publicist has has impacted that um, article. Now, if it's negative, it's not a good day for us because we're trying to get that taken down. But I think that our our overall job is to control the narrative. Right. Like to control 
what you see about our clients, whether that be our brands, our executives, our events, um, our pro for me programming. But it's really just it's storytelling, and in, within that storytelling, you're controlling the narrative of what you want people to see and know about your brand, which is nine times out of ten or ten times out of ten, you want it to be a positive impact. Um, and I think that as, for me as a publicist, I, I mean, my day is like before I got, got started talking to you, I was literally having a glass of wine, ty typing a million emails, trying to unthaw some chicken. But it's just it, we're on 24 seven. Like it's not one of those. And I think the, earlier in my career prepared me for that by having a mentality that I didn't work, work nine to five. I worked until the job get done. And that's, that is exactly what I do now. I wake up in the middle of the night checking my emails because as a publicist, you just never know when you'll have to dive in and like put out a fire or answer an email, but we're constantly, we're writing press releases. We we're pitching different um, news outlets about uh, different media outlets. I'm sorry um, about events or, that we have going on or any initiatives we have going on. It's where I'm, I'm constantly putting together red carpets for events and things like that and inviting press out and inviting um, talent out and then making sure the talent that's representing the brand, they have the right talking point so that they're conveying the right narrative to the media. So it's, it's, it's ongoing, but really what it is really is about is storytelling. Like you're painting a picture of whether it be a brand, um, again, an artist or, or anything like that, but you, you're really, you're storytelling. Man, it's not a lot of people I know that work as hard as publicists work. Publicists who actually work, you know, like the real ones, not the ones that's just like Insta, Instagram publicists, but the ones who are really, really, really doing the damn thing. I don't know how y'all do it because y'all are juggling so many projects. You're wearing so many hats. Like you said, you're always on. There are no office hours with so, so many expectations and responsibilities, how do you maintain your sanity? Do you have any self-care rituals that help you to relieve stress other than um, the occasional glass of wine? I was about to say, uh, other than wine, um, you know what? I just, I, I love to cook. So like coming home and cooking, um, I don't, I don't know how, because it just seems like I'm doing more work, but I'm a nurturer, nurturer by nature. Um, I have like Southern roots in my family. So I just, I'm just like a Southern girl at heart. So I love to cook. Um, I love to have get people over and cook for them. Um, and then I just, and then I like to hang with my girlfriends. Like there's nothing like hanging with your good girls and just talking and kind of relieving some stress. Um, and you know, just kind of catching up and talking about different things. And I, that's, so those are my two, I think my two stress relief is really, and it's nothing like a good massage. Let me just say that. Like every, every couple of months I have to have one of those. My, I get these like little tight balls in my neck from, from all the, the stress from working in PR, but definitely cooking, um, hanging out with my girlfriends and, and a good massage. And let's not forget the wine. <laughs> Don't forget the wine. So and, and another thing that you've successfully um, been able to juggle is your relationship, right? Because you recently got engaged. Congratulations on Thank that. You. So you obviously had to make time for your man while building your career, right? Which is one thing that so many of us, millennials specifically, um, struggle with. How did you manage to balance your life in order to create space for love? And I just thought of this, but I want to ask you this too. As a strong, successful Black woman who has to be strong and successful all day long, how do you soften up and let that guard down when you are around Bay? Well, okay, so the, the first part of your question, I think it's important to find someone who's on your level. A lot of times, as 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 Black, I'm, I'm just going to say, because you said we could just be open. <laughs> a lot of times, as Black women, you know, the the number of, of successful Black women sometimes, out, especially in New York, outnumbers the, love, the number of successful Black men, or what we like to deem successful Black men. And I think that you you just don't lower your standards because when you lower your standards, then 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 you meet them. You meet people where they are. Um, and what I was looking for was just someone someone who was goal as goal oriented as me. And my fiance is a beast. Like you know, we he he is traveling every other day. Um, 
And we're just on the same page. So when I'm grinding and I'm not, I'm, I don't get home until 11 o'clock at night. He's not like, oh, where you been? Whatever. He's texting me like, babe, are you good? I'm going to wait up for you. I come home. I talk to him. Sometimes I'm sitting there. I'm like telling him what I'm thinking in terms of work. He's, we throw ideas. Sometimes uh, we throw ideas off of each other. And then sometimes date night is literally us in front of our computers with a glass of wine and some takeout. Um, and we just play our roles. Like I take the back seat sometimes and we'll be with him. And when he's when he's with clients and work in the room. And then sometimes when I'm doing events, he'll be like, babe, do your thing. And I, I'll come back and everybody's like, oh, I, I met Ho- I met Jose and I, I met your fiance. He's amazing. So we just we 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 know how to balance each other out. And he's my accountability partner. Like he he's like, babe, did you do what you said you were going to do for this? Did you do what you said we're gonna, you were going to do for that? Um, and he's my he's like my number one supporter and vice versa. And it's just it's one of those things that we just try to like just kind of balance each other out. But we, we get, he gets it. He gets it. When I first met him, I was like, this kid is like, oh, I thought I was like, oh, like, you know, like my adrenaline was like, go, 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 go. That's how he is. So I think a lot of times you have to find somebody who who matches your drive, because when you don't, that's when you get the man that's like, oh, you always working, you always doing this. Well, what else are you expecting me to be doing? Like, you know, that's just that's just not a man's thing. Like, I, I want to be a boss, too. So you have to you got to find a man who allows you to be that boss that you want to be. Um, and then the second part of your question was, oh, like I said to you before, I'm a I'm a I'm nurturing like I'm a nurturer. By, by by default, right? Because I'm I have like a little I have a little southern in me, um, and so it's not even about being. I definitely wouldn't say being soft, but it's just it's just about like making sure that I'm providing a platform for him at home and just just in our relationship where he can be the best person he needs to be. And so I don't think it's about me being soft. It's making sure that he's good, you know, making sure you know that I cook for him sometimes or that I'm just the ear to, for him to, for him to like talk to when he's had a long day or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of things around the house when he, when, when, when he's too busy and he's doing it for me when I'm too busy. So just making sure that I play my role in, 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 in terms of balancing the relationship, but also just making sure that, that I'm creating a platform for him to go out in the world and be the best person that he can be so that we both can leave a legacy for our children and, and for our, you know, just in general. Y'all heard it here first. It is possible. <laughs> it really is possible to have it all ladies. And the thing that I think um, that I love the most of just knowing about your story and hearing you talk about it is the fact that we don't have to settle, you know, all of those guys that did not work out were not meant to be like the man for you is coming as long as you are constantly focusing on investing in yourself and becoming the woman that you were born to be. So Chloe is proof of that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, I mean, It's hard, but I, and I'll just to add to that really quickly. I think that, you know, you have to, you have to, when people say, well, well, I'm not used to doing that or I'm not used to doing that. Don't get used to them saying they're not used to doing it. Make them get used to it, you know? And so that's just, that's important. And and I, I wouldn't say I have it all because it's hard. It, it's hard, like, trying to balance a relationship and, and um, a career and a social life because I like the party, too. You know, it's hard. But it's the reality of it is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer of living life to its fullest and wanting all the best things in life. And and sometimes you, as, a, as a lot of times it's pressure on us from our parents when we're in our late 20s, like, oh, you got to find a man. You got to find a man. Do it on your own time. Do it when you're ready. Like, you know, men follow their careers. Women, we should, too, if we want to. And if we don't want to, then don't do, you know, don't do that. But at the same time, you you can lead your own life and, and have whatever you want on your own time. Don't let people rush you to be married or in love. Cause sometimes we just like being single. And if you, and if you, if somebody comes along, that's how my fiance was. He came along and I was like, I kind of want to be single right now. And then he kind of, you know, kept coming along. And then I saw him one day, I was like, he's cuter than I thought, you know, and <laughs> the rest was history. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So last question. I love asking this because I get so many dope, dope answers and I'm sure you are, are going to have a dope one as well. So if you could write a recipe for success that only includes three ingredients, what would those three ingredients be? Um, that's a good question. So 
the first one, the first ingredient would be passion, because I think that a lot of times we're encouraged to go after the money versus going after what we, we love and are passionate about. And what I will tell you is if you follow your passion, I guarantee you, and you well, just not follow your passion, but follow your passion and be diligent and like really, really go after it. The money will come. So I think, but but then you also, you're doing what you love and you're having fun doing it and you're getting paid to do it. So I would say follow your passion first. Um, the second one, it's kind of what you, you talked about, character. Like, I think that, you know, your character, it, it, it precedes you, you know, and it's one of those things that you, people know about you before you probably even walk in the door from word of mouth or whatever. And so I, I like to think that, Good character gives you success because people want to work with great people. Um, the, and the last one, what I would I would say, and I don't want to get spiritual, is faith. Like you know, you you have to really you have to really believe um, that things are ordained and that things will work out in your in you because sometimes we we're sometimes we're stuck and and we don't know what's what we're going to do next but then you just have to believe that it's ordained and and if you work hard that things will work out. So I'm going to go my ingredients are passion, character and faith. Chloe, I have truly <laughs> truly enjoyed this conversation and I know that my ladies Appreciate all of these gems that you have been dropping. You are such an inspiration. Please let them know um, how they can connect with you on social media and if there is absolutely anything that we can do to support you um, in, in on your current goals or in anything you're working on. Um, so I'm cur- I'm currently working on the Global Spin Awards. We just announced today um, that we will be. Well, we announced that Snoop Dogg will be hosting the awards. We're honoring J- Jermaine Dupri and um, Timberland and a, a host of performances that we haven't announced yet. But it's L- it's in L.A. during All-Star Weekend on the 15th of February. So if you're interested in going, DM me. Um, it'll be a great award show. And then you can find me on Instagram at Miss Chloe L, M-S-C-H-L-O-E-E-L-L-E. Twitter, the same name. Um, and I try to get back to anybody that DMs me. I'm, I'm an open book. I love mentoring. Um, I'm an advocate for mentoring. So even if you want to just drop me like one question, question in my DM that I didn't answer, feel free to do that. Um, you know, it's just, it's all love. I just, I love promoting positivity and helping young women, um, get to where they need to be in life. This has been another game-changing episode of Confessions of a Workaholic, meant to empower and encourage you to get that ass to work. You already have everything you need to get everything you want if you are willing to do what it takes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here, Chloe. Thank you for having me.